we are going to start a new topic transistor biasing which is a very important concept related with amplification when we are using a transistor as an amplifier then the concept of transistor biasing plays an important role we are aware of the term biasing when we study a simple pn junction diode in a pn junction diode we talk about forward biasing and reverse biasing in forward biasing the p side or the p terminal of the pn junction is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and n terminal is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and uh, this kind of biasing is called forward biasing and in reverse biasing the p terminal is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and n terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the battery this is the reverse biasing of pn junction so in case of a simple pn junction diode biasing means simple connecting the battery across the pn junction other kind of uh, circuit elements are not included in the biasing of a pn junction but when we are dealing with a uh, transistor and we are using uh, the transistor as an amplifier then we have to uh, consider several other things now we know that the uh, uh, function of an amplifier is to amplify or increase the ac signal which is connected to the uh, input terminals of the amplifier this is the main uh, function of an amplifier he, if we are applying a sine wave as it is uh, shown in the uh, figure it is shown in this uh, figure this is the input signal which is a sine wave of uh, small value since the amplitude is very low so it is a uh, input signal uh, input sine wave of uh, small value then if we are applying this kind of signal to the amplifier then at the output of the amplifier we will get a large signal that is the amplitude of the signal will be increased but the type of the signal will remain the same type of the signal means the frequency will be the same as the frequency of the input signal and also the kind of wave that is if the input signal is sine wave then the output signal will also be a sine wave and if input signal is a square wave then output will also be a square wave therefore we can say that uh, the only the size uh, or the, uh, the amplitude of the signal is being increased by the amplifier not the other things this kind of amplification by a transistor or an amplifier is called faithful amplification this is faithful amplification but if we consider a circuit in which we are applying a, a sine wave as it is shown in the second figure we are applying a sine wave of small amplitude at the input of the uh, amplifier and in the output we are no doubt we are getting a sine wave this is the sine wave but if we analyze this wave we can see that the upper the uh, upper portion of the positive pulse is clipped and similarly in the second case the uh, tip of the negative cycle of the, uh, the, uh, the negative cycle of the output signal is clipped therefore the uh, output signal is not the replica of the input signal in the, in the uh, uh, form of the wave because uh, in the input it was a uh, purely sine wave and in the output it is distorted output signal this kind of uh, amplification is called unfaithful 
uh, amplification. This is unfaithful amplification. Therefore, when we are uh, fabricating an amplifier with the help of a transistor, then the main purpose should be faithful amplification. It means that it is the purpose of the amplifier to increase or amplify the amplitude of the signal which is being applied at the input, but the form and the type of the signal will remain the same. The main aim is to get the faithful amplification. Now, the main thing is that we all know that the transistors are of two types, uh, PNP transistor and NPN transistor. And uh, uh, there are three terminals in each type of uh, transistor. There are uh, three terminals, emitter, base, and collector for PNP transistor as well as for NPN transistor. For a faithful amplification, since we are talking about faithful amplification, so in faithful amplifica amplification, the main condition is that the emitter base junction, because if it is PNP transistor, then the emitter is P type, base is N type, and the collector is P type. For faithful amplification, the emitter and base junction should always be forward biased because it is a simple PN junction. Emitter is P type and base is N type and it should be forward biased. That is, emitter is connected to positive and base is connected to negative terminal of the battery. And the second condition is that the base and collector junction should be reverse biased. So, if again we are taking the case of PNP transistor, in this case the base is N type and the collector is P type, therefore the, it should be reverse bias, therefore the collector should be connected to the negative terminal and the base should be con connected to the positive terminal. So, if this condition is satisfied, that is the emitter base junction is forward biased and the uh, base collector junction is uh, reverse biased, then the amplifier will be capable of giving faithful amplification. Okay. So, in the previous slide, we discussed that for faithful amplification, the condition is that the emitter base junction should be forward biased and the base collector junction should be reverse biased. But the question arises whether these two conditions are sufficient to give a faithful amplification in an amplifier or uh, we can say if we are uh, connecting any amount of uh, voltage in forward bias to the emitter base junction and any amount of um, uh, reverse bias to the base collector junction, uh, then uh, will that amplifier will give us uh, exact replica of the uh, input signal at the output? No, the, uh, this uh, uh, process is not so simple. There are many other things which have to be taken into consideration if we want to get faithful amplification from an amplifier. There are several other conditions which are to be fulfilled and we are going to discuss all those conditions which have to be satisfied if we have to uh, get a proper uh, the output signal which is exact replica of uh, the input except the size of the signal. So look at the first figure. This is the circuit of a PNP transistor in which the this is the symbol of a PNP transistor and uh, the emitter uh, this uh, circuit shows the biasing of uh, biasing means the battery connections for the PNP transistor when it is being used as an amplifier. In this case, as we can uh, see that uh, this is uh, emitter and this is base. This junction is to be forward biased. Since the emitter is P type, so emitter is connected to the positive terminal of the battery 
and the base is n type therefore uh, base is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the uh, transistor is connected in common emitter configuration because out of the uh, three types of configurations common emitter configuration is most beneficial therefore if we are studying amplifiers and uh, uh, we will consider the configuration uh, as a common emitter configuration in each and every case so this is uh, the, the emitter and base junction is forward biased. Now we go to uh, base and collector junction. Uh, since base is connected to the negative terminal here. And here the collector is also P-type because this is PNP transistor. So collector junction is to be, collector base junction is to be reverse biased. And since the collector is P-type, therefore it is to be connected to the negative terminal of the battery therefore this p type is connected to the high value of negative voltage uh, so this uh, collector and uh, base junction uh, will be reverse pass so the primary conditions of uh, faithful amplification by an amplifier are being satisfied now we will go to somewhat details of whether uh, this circuit is capable of giving faithful amplification for this consider the emitter and collector loop this is the emitter and collector loop and uh, uh, we will apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this uh, emitter and collector loop so we will have to consider all the uh, voltages which are applied in this loop and the voltage voltages uh, or the uh, potential drop which are produced across the resistor rl is the load resistor since the current this uh, this arrow shows the direction of current and this is that the current is flowing in this direction when the current is flowing in this direction uh, since the uh, current is uh, we take as the flow of positive charge so at this point the current is entering positive charge is entering therefore this end is positive and current is coming out of this or the positive charge is coming out of this terminal therefore uh, this uh, terminal will be will have a negative potential and the current is if the collector current is ic uh, and the load resistor uh, load resistance is rl then the potential drop is ic multiplied by rl where the left uh, terminal is positive and the right terminal is negative similarly the uh, voltage applied is vcc positive and terminal you can see and across the when the uh, voltage the current is flowing in the circuit uh, there is uh, some potential drop produced across the collector and emitter uh, between uh, collector and emitter and suppose this potential drop is represented as vce okay and uh, since uh, the, uh, this is uh, uh, current is flowing in this direction so the lower end will be positive and current in, uh, current or positive charge is coming out of uh, uh, this terminal therefore the upper end will be negative so this is the potential drop uh, produced across uh, collector and emitter so we are going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, in this uh, collector emitter loop. Suppose for applying the uh, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can uh, move either we can move in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. And suppose we are moving along anti-clockwise direction. So the question arises whether uh, which potentials are to be taken as uh, uh, with positive sign and which potentials are to be taken with negative sign because Kirchhoff's voltage law says that um, uh, around a closed loop the uh, sum of all the EMFs applied and uh, voltages produced should be zero. So if the sum is um, uh, equal to zero it means that uh, some quantities ha have to be uh, positive and uh, the other quantities have to be negative so that the sum will come out to be zero so if we are suppose we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction uh, so uh, when 
and uh, we will take a, 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 a thumb rule that uh, while moving in this anti clockwise direction there is a drop in potential there is a drop in potential for example in vcc we are going from positive to negative so it will be it will be vcc will be taken as uh, negative minus vcc minus vcc and we are moving in this direction we are going from negative to positive so there is a rise in potential so it is to be taken with positive sign so minus vcc plus ic into rl and now we are moving like this again we are moving from negative to positive so there is a rise in potential hence the complete equation will be minus vcc plus ic into rl plus vce is equal to 0 okay this is the equation we are getting after application of kirchhoff's voltage law if we solve this equation then the uh, expression for the collector current uh, that is uh, ic will become as vcc upon rl minus vc upon rl this is a simple calculation and you can do it by yourself this this is the variation of ic and vce this variation is called dc load line <clears throat> there are two variables in this uh, equation there are two variables the first variable is collector current and the second variable is vce vcc and rl are constant quantities so ic is variable vc is variable and this quantity is constant therefore this is the equation of a straight line this is the equation of the straight line and it is called this variation of ic against vce is called load line as it is shown in this figure on the y-axis we are taking ic and on the x-axis we have taken vce and if we draw the variation then it will come out to be a uh, come out to be a straight line which is called a, the load line of the transistor but we know that this is the case we have not taken into account the characteristics of the transistor we have not taken this is a simple we have uh, considered the transistor just as a simple resistor across which the voltage vc is produced like in across rl ic into rl is produced and across uh, the transistor there is some resistance and across this res the, that resistance the voltage drop is vce but it is not like that the transistor has some uh, personal characteristics it has some inherent characteristics that is with the variation in vce how the collector current will vary um, how the current co collector current will change with vc with the variation is vce for a transistor this is another thing and we have to take uh, that also into account and we know that the variation of collector current with the variation in the applied voltage vce are called the output characteristics of a transistor in common emitter configuration right in the load line we have taken transistor only as a resistor but transistor independently is not a linear device when vc is varying the ic will vary in some different manner and those uh, this kind of variation are taken into account when we are dealing with the output characteristics of common emitter configuration in this figure in the second figure we can see that again we have taken ic and vce and this is the load line and we have drawn the for different values of base current for this is the base current ib1 the for base current ib1 the characteristic curve of the transistor is like this if the base current is increased uh, to ib2 then we get the characteristic curve like this 
and the third point is when the uh, IV base current is IV3, then the characteristic curve is like this. In this, the upper shaded region is called the saturation region and the lower shaded region, this region is called the cutoff region. So the most important point and uh, the uh, and this region from point A to point B, that is this point and this point, this portion of the load line is called the active region. Okay, so we have three regions: saturation region, cutoff region, and active region. Now there are infinite number of points on the load line for which we can operate the transistor. But the actual Q point, because on a line we can have infinite number of points, but the actual operating point or actual Q point of the transistor or the amplifier will be the point of inter, uh, intersection of characteristic curve and the load line. Because if the if we are operating the uh, amplifier with base current IB1, then we are getting the characteristic curve like this, and we have got the uh, load line. We have drawn the load line, so there is a point of intersection of these two, and this is called the quiescent point or operating point of the amplifier. So. Uh, the Q, this, this is the um, thing which we have, uh, this is the uh, point which we have uh, defined as the operating point of the transistor and the transistor will operate actually uh, at the values which are given or the coordinates of the Q point. In the previous slide, it was mentioned that the actual operating point or Q point of the transistor is the point of intersection of DC load line and the characteristic curve of the transistor for that particular base current. In this figure, we can see that suppose we have not applied any uh, input signal to the input AC signal to the transistor at this point of time and the base current we have applied only the DC voltage across the emitter and base junction so and suppose the base current at this point of time is this much for example it is 10 micro ampere so when uh, the base current is 10 micro ampere then the characteristic curve corresponding to uh, corresponding to 10 micro ampere is this one. So the point of intersection between the characteristic curve and the DC load line is indicated by this point Q. So this is the DC Q point of the transistor for that particular value of base current. Now in an amplifier, the main purpose is to amplify or increase the uh, uh, small AC signal which was applied at the uh, input of the transistor or the amplifier. So when we are applying the AC signal at the input, it means that the base current will change accordingly because initially we have applied only the DC voltage, so a constant base current was uh, flowing through the base and emitter uh, uh, the circuit. But now the AC signal is being applied. Therefore, according to the AC signal, the uh, input current or the base current is also varying. So initially it was if the base current was 10 microampere, then uh, when the AC signal is increasing, then accordingly the base current will also increase. And when the base current increases, the characteristic curve shifts upwards. So when the characteristic curves are shifting upwards, then 
the points of intersection between the DC load line and the characteristic curve will also shift uh, upwards. Okay, so the when the positive half is being applied, then the Q point of the transistor will move upwards. Similarly, when the negative cycle is being applied, then the, <clears throat> the base current will decrease. And with the decrease in base current, the characteristic curves will shift downwards. And accordingly, the Q point will also move downwards. Now we also know that the basic condition of faithful amplification is that the Q point should lie in the active region of the transistor. This is the active region. There are three regions. This region is uh, the saturation region and this region is the <coughs> cutoff region. And between these two regions, there is active region. Until the Q point is lying in the active region, we are getting undistorted output from the amplifier. But if the Q point shifts upwards, suppose the Q point is at this point and we have applied a large signal, then the upper point, uh, this uh, upper uh, uh, portion of the uh, positive cycle will be clipped. Similarly, if the Q point is uh, located uh, in the lower portion of the uh, DC load line, then in that case, in the we are, if we are applying a large signal, then the uh, negative tip of the, the signal will be cut off and we are uh, getting distorted output at the, uh, from the amplifier. So it is very safe to uh, fix the DC Q point or the initial Q point of the transistor at the midpoint of the load line. Because when it is uh, at the midpoint, uh, we are applying the AC signal, then we can safely say that uh, uh, for the entire variation of the Q point, it will lie uh, in the active region of the load line unless we are applying a greater signal if we are applying a very large ac signal at the input in that case uh, the uh, q point will go beyond uh, the active region and uh, though we have uh, fixed the q point at the midpoint initially but we are applying a very large signal and it is exceeding the limits and it is going to the uh, saturation region and in the cutoff region but still the safest point uh, uh, the safest <coughs> uh, point for the uh, uh, q point is the midpoint of the load line so it is decided that the dc q point of the transistor should be fixed at the midpoint of the load line so that when we are applying ac input signal then the uh, output signal will be undistorted an exact replica uh, of the input signal only the size of the output signal will be greater than the size of the input signal now suppose we have uh, fixed the q point at the midpoint of the load line and we are uh, confident that we we will be getting uh, a undistorted uh, output uh, from the amplifier but is it true in actual case no it is not true because the once we have uh, fix the Q point at a particular point or the midpoint of the load line, there are 100% chances that the Q point will not be fixed and the uh, Q point is uh, observed to be shifted towards the saturation point. If the, uh, so uh, it means that once it, it has been fixed, uh, the Q point with the uh, operation of the uh, amplifier or the functioning of the amplifier, the Q point will not remain fixed at the midpoint of the load line, but it will change. Now we will 
see ki how it will change and what are the factors which are affecting the um, uh, stability of q point even after suitable selection of position of q point it does not remain stable and tends to shift from its position it happens due to the following factors there are several factors on which the uh, stability of the q point depends first is the variation of transistor parameters with temperature we know that from our uh, earlier knowledge we know that the variation of base current in the common emitter uh, configuration is given by the equation ic uh, is equal to beta into ib plus 1 plus beta into ico where ic is the collector current ib is the base current beta is the current gain for the common emitter configuration and it is uh, beta the value of beta is the uh, it is a ratio of collector current and base current that is ic upon it is ic upon ib this is the value of current gain beta for uh, the common emitter configuration and ic o is the reverse saturation current this uh, reverse saturation current is the current which is uh, uh, which is uh, made by the minority charge carriers so it depends directly depends upon temperature when the temperature is increasing the minority charge carriers will increase and correspondingly the reverse saturation current will increase it means that the collector current ic which determines the position of the q point it depends upon beta that is a current gain and the reverse saturation current ico it is not a constant quantity but it depends upon uh, several factors and these three factors it depends on three factors that is beta ib and ico these three factors increase with the rise in temperature and it is found that the current gain reverse saturation current they increase with temperature because we know that the reverse saturation current is made up by the minority charge carriers uh, uh, which are the charge carriers which uh, that are uh, produced by the uh, by the heat or the temperature of the, uh, the semiconductor so as the temperature is increasing the reverse saturation current will also increase and the current gain beta is also found to increase with temperature so when the temperature is increasing all these factors on the right hand side are found to be increasing and if all these factors are increasing it means that ic will increase and in the graph in this graph in which y axis is ic and x axis is vce uh, as the value of ic is increasing if the ic value is increasing then the q point which was initially fixed at the midpoint it will move upwards okay with the uh, as uh, why the temperature is increasing the temperature is increasing because Mm, uh, the amplifier is uh, working constantly for example the amplifier is uh, functioning for uh, one hour then in one hours the temperature of the transistor will increase so uh, we uh, make it sure that uh, there is uh, some heat sink or some kind of uh, measures are taken uh, to maintain the temperature of the transistor constant but um, the temperature of the transistor increases with the uh, with the functioning of the with the long hour functioning of the transistor so when the temperature is increasing all these quantities on the right hand side will increase and so will the collector current ic and with the increase in collector current ic the q point will shift upwards and after some time it will reach the saturation region the q point will reach the saturation region and in that case the positive half of the signal will be completely cut off clipped or removed
now we have reached the conclusion that the q point is not stable with the continuous working of the amplifier though we have ensured that the q point should be fixed at the midpoint of the load line but as the amplifier is working temperature rises and with the rise in temperature the q point shifts upwards and in longer run the output of that amplifier will be distorted so in order to remove this difficulty some special measures are to be taken and one of these measures is that we we combine or we connect some special kind of uh, circuit components like resistor along with the dc voltage to that transistor when we are biasing the transistor or when we are applying dc voltage to the emitter base junction and base collector junction then we will combine some selective resistors and capacitors so that when the q point shifts upwards they compensate its shifting and they bring the q point back to the midpoint of the load line such a special circuits especially in the case of a transistor because for pn junction the biasing is simply connecting uh, the dc voltage or the battery to the um, pn junction diode for transistor the combination of a special circuit components with the dc uh, battery or the dc voltage which is connected to the transistor such kind of arrangement is called transistor biasing circuits which make which ensure that the q point of the uh, amplifier remains fixed at the midpoint of the load line now in order to Uh, define the uh, or uh, in order to evaluate the uh, stability of a particular amplifier we define a factor stability factor uh, and uh, with the help of uh, numerical value of that stability factor uh, we can judge uh, the quality uh, of that uh, amplifier and this stability factor is uh, denoted by s and it is defined as the rate of change of collector current ic with respect to the change in reverse saturation current ico keeping the base current ib and current gain beta constant since uh, the shifting in q point is directly related to the, uh, the increase in the collector current ic therefore the stability factor uh, it defines the variation in ic or the collector current with the variation in ico or the reverse saturation current which directly depends upon temperature so by uh, seeing the numerical value of the stability factor we can uh, we can judge okay, how much variation in the Uh, reverse saturation current will uh, increase the uh, collector current and how much will be the shifting of that uh, q point in that particular case now if we analyze the stability factor then it is s is equal to dic upon dico suppose the stability factor s is high its numerical value is high when it is high it simply means that the numerator that is dic will be high and dico will be small so the high value of a stability factor will indicate that even a small change in uh, ico that is if the dico is small and even a small change in ico will vary or will change the uh, collector current ic by a large amount therefore the high value of s 
high numerical value of stability factor indicates that the Q point is not much stable because the variation in collector current is very large with temperature. And in contrary, uh, if the value of stability factor is low, it means that DIC will be very low. The change in collector current is low, while DICO will be high. Even uh, when the change in reverse saturation current is very high, the collector current does not change uh, by large amount or DIC is low. Therefore, the low numerical value of a stability factor directly indicates that the Q point is quite stable. Therefore, we must um, fabricate an amplifier. We must try to um, fabricate an amplifier in which the numerical value of stability factor is as low as possible. When I, DIC is equal to DICO, then S will be equal to 1, which is the smallest value of S. 1 is the smallest value of S. And uh, for such a circuit, the Q point will be highly stable. The expression for the stability factor is DIC upon DICO. So, if you want to calculate the value of stability factor, then we uh, must know the values of uh, DIC, which is very simple, how much the, uh, the collector current is varying. But it is very difficult to measure the change in uh, reverse saturation current, that is ICO. So it is very difficult to uh, know the value of DICO. So we will uh, find out an alternative expression for stability factor. Uh, by using that expression, the calculation of stability factor will be quite easy. We know this uh, equation for uh, the collector current IC. IC is equal to beta into IB plus 1 plus beta into ICO. Now we differentiate with respect to ICO. It is uh, somewhat misprinted here. It should be uh, ICO. We are differentiating this equation with respect to ICO. So we will get this result. And we want the expression for DIC upon DICO which is the stability factor. By rearranging the terms, uh, DIC upon DICO, that is the stability factor, will be 1 plus beta upon 1 minus beta DIB upon DIC. This is the simpler expression for the stability factor because the value of current gain beta is known. It is uh, fixed for a particular uh, type of transistor. Uh, the the variation in base current is easy to measure and uh, so is the variation in collector current that is DIC. Till now we have studied what is the purpose of transistor biasing in an amplifier. Now uh, we will see what are the uh, main methods of transistor biasing. The first one which is the most fundamental one is base bias, which is also called fixed bias. This is a primitive type of biasing, which is no longer in practical use. But for the sake of uh, understanding the biasing method uh, from the initial level, we will discuss base bias also. The second is base bias with emitter feedback. The third is base bias with collector feedback. And the fourth one is voltage divider bias, or which is also known as self bias. And this is the most commonly used method of biasing. For this video, this is all I can tell you right now. And about uh, different types of transistor uh, biasing, their stability factor, and the analysis uh, of their working uh, 
uh, will be discussed in the uh, in my next video thank you